Everybody needs good neighbors with a little understanding. You can find the perfect plan. Neighbors should be there for one another. That's when good neighbors become. Come in. Hi, I'm still unpacking a few boxes at the house and I found this book on mental and physical relaxation. Thought it might be good for Daphne. Oh, not you too. Uh, everyone's been on your back, have they? That's putting it mildly. I've been banished to this couch until the baby comes. Yeah, and I have to carry her to bed tonight. Hmm, sounds like a good life to me. See, I told you most women would say that. She doesn't believe it for a second. No, you're right. <laughs> it'd drive me up the wall too. <laughs> but it'll be worth it in the long run. That's what convinced me to stay put. Listen, if, if Paul's out this evening, why don't you stay for dinner? I'm cooking. Uh, thanks, but I'm afraid I can't. Very wise, Des burns water. I do not. I promise I won't poison you. No, I've got Lucy coming over for dinner. She's going to give me a flute recital. Oh, that should be fun. How many lessons has she had? Three? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a pity we can't make it. <laughs> oh, and a boy. Yeah. No, I, I, somebody in, I, I was in Ireland the other week and uh, the disc jockey that was interviewing me said it's amazing because they actually, um, people in Neighbours change heads and I thought, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Scott's changed his head, Lucy's changed her head and uh, we've now got another character who I'm not going to tell you who's going to change her head. And, who? Uh, who? I'm not telling. Oh, I don't even know that. That's a clue. <laughs> It's a, it's a female member of the cast. And uh, no, with, with the new Lucy, it's, uh, it's funny because we're getting a lot of uh, feedback from people over here, once again, because the new Lucy, the new, we call her the new Lucy all the time. Um, Sasha, who plays the, the new Lucy, um, was very, very, very nervous when she first started. And of course, it was her first gig, fresh out of school. I mean, she's still in school, obviously. Uh, and she was, it was sort of that slow drawl and all of that, and she's sort of uh, slowly got over that. So, of course, what she's doing now in Australia is a hell of a lot better than what you're getting over here. So, bear with her because she does pick up a lot. Well, she's that's been well with all the um, cast. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. What makes you think that? We want complete honesty here. Please. I would. I requested seats down the back of the plane this morning. <laughs> no, no, no. We we we. It's once works over, that's it. No, we do. It's, it's amazing because a lot of people say that also. They say, um, oh, you know, it must be so difficult always working together for so long. Because we do. We do an awful, as I said, that schedule before. Um, it, virtually in each other's pockets the whole time. And, uh, no, nah, we get on great. You all love but, each other to bits. Yeah, we, of course, there's a lot of stuff in the press here. I've got the opportunity to set this straight now. Everything that's in the British press really makes us laugh. I mean, you, all we can do is laugh because uh, there's so many stories that we, we see in print and we think, gosh, that's amazing. Where did they get this from? Because it's got nothing to do with, uh, with what we've said or, or what's actually happening. We do. We get on very, very well. We're a very close cast. Yeah. Apart, yeah. From, yeah. apart from when young gals call in and say that they prefer um, you to uh, Craig and that sort of thing as the new sex symbol. She's yeah, well, trying to... Yeah, well, no, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll just keep it down. Craig, Craig, just, just keep it down, will you? <laughs> it's a bit like open air, Susan. You know what it's like. I do, I do. Yeah. Here's another big sharp technology in that one. Yes. Here's a question from Kate Butler who's phoned in and she wants to know, why does nobody have any upstairs in their houses in Ramsey Street? <laughs> any, any upstairs? Up oh, we do. Upstairs. Have we ever seen yes. anybody's bedroom? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, there's one house in the street and it's the one that you and I live in. Yeah, that's Paul and Giles. Yeah. Mm. yeah. But that's oh, the only good. one. But I guess right. the, the suburbs in Australia are... There aren't a lot of two-story houses. Yeah, they're all bungalows, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, they're bungalows. The, the, the attitude yeah. problem, we, our noses bleed. <laughs> right, Susan, what, what about Well, you were horrible landlords. And uh, there was another instance as well, when you were rotten to Susan. Did you get any sort of, um, you know, flack from the public on that at all? Hey, listen, get, I've, I've had a death threat. Oh! Yeah, no, seriously. <laughs> I had a death threat. Oh, this is She's quite so some time. Happy. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. What, 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 what happened? Did it, did it really affect people? No, I didn't. Uh, there were two things about it, actually. Uh, it, it didn't worry me too much. Once again, it was one of those things that I could have a bit of a chuckle over, simply because... Yeah. It, it, well, no, maybe I shouldn't say this. It came from here. Hang on. I'm here now, aren't I? It came from England. <laughs> it's out of the country. Um, it's, it came from England, but also uh, I was rather flattered because I was put in the, uh, in the same category as Paul Hogan and somebody else. And I thought, oh, well, that's nice, you know. Yeah, At least if I'm going to be killed, I'm going to be killed with the best. Company. <laughs> so, in, in short, actually, a, a lady called Laura Bra Blake has phoned in and wants to know if you're anything like Paul Robinson in character in real life. Nah, nah. Um, about the only two things that are, are similar with um, Paul and myself now, Anne will vouch for me here, is um, Stefan and Paul have a, a phone attached to their ear. And... <laughs> and... <laughs> Stefan and Paul. <laughs> I've got a bit of a reputation as <laughs> being on the phone all the time. Okay, um, let's let's try and get some more phone calls in because people, the lines are blocking up now. <laughs> we, we will now clear them. We we'll clear the dunnies now. Uh, Maria, Marie <laughs> Dyer from Mansfield uh, near Nottingham. Uh, Marie, are you on the line? Hello. Hi, Marie. Um, Hello. Now you want to ask the whole question about the singing careers because everybody in neighbours sings. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Stefan, please. Yes. Hello. Have you got a, a good singing voice? No, no, that's why I made a record. Well, would you like to become a, sing a star? Would like I like Charlie Jason? <sighs> Well, you've released oh, no, the record. No, hang on, I'm not a star now. Come on, let's get serious <laughs> about this. <laughs> There's a lot of people want to know what happened to your record because you sang it on more than yes, a few years ago. We've had a bit of a snag, a little bit of a political snag. The record, which I was actually over here about a month ago um, promoting, has, uh, has been held up for the UK release. It's just been released in Australia last Tuesday, the Tuesday before we came over here. Um, from what I heard, I haven't heard anything since I've been here, but uh, I spoke to the, one of my producers and he said it's doing quite well, which is great. Yes. Um, but at the moment, I don't take this as gospel, but it's, it's more than likely going to be released here in January now. Which is, we sort of got to wait for Christmas to finish. Now, Craig, you yeah. already having been in a band, you must have plans to release a record. Um, n uh, not, not at the moment. Good, uh, thank goodness for that. Then. But... Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, but. Not, not just at the moment. I, I, um, I don't know, maybe, maybe an Alex Clegg in the Y front goes Acid House album, but Neighbours... <laughs> Neighbours is um, taking up all my time and energies at the moment, so we'll wait and see. What can we, can so we just say, I've yeah? got interrupt. a little bit of flattery here on, uh, on Craig's behalf there. He's, he's a world-class guitarist. He's really? Brilliant. Yeah, yeah, he's a brilliant guitarist. Thank you, got, Well, you've got and Guy on sax yeah. and keyboards. I mean, there's a very talented bunch of people, musos, but yeah, we all sing and dance. And Good geez, to hear. I, I won't worry about that heartthrob thing earlier now. That's I'll right. That no, you've well, made your day now. <laughs> let's, let's speak to Alison Neville in London. Hi, Alison. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Alison. Go ahead with your question. I'd like to ask Elaine a question. Yeah. Yes, go ahead. Do you watch Neighbours now you've left? <clears throat> I, I quite honestly don't get the time. Um, I usually find myself, whenever it's on, to be out doing something or other. Uh, Craig today is wearing half of an extremely nice outfit. Just stand up there and let's see He's it. sartorially yes. splendid today, aren't you? You know, we've got half a pair of jeans here on Craig, which <laughs> look really, really well. well that's very trendy <laughs> now, I mean. This, <laughs> Come on. Right, let's go. Who have we got now? We've got this April catch Connolly on. from <laughs> Wellwood Garden City. Hi, April. Good morning. Hi, April. Go ahead with your question. Uh, I'd like to ask Anne Charleston, um, when you were sort of being mad, um, or when Charlene was getting married, did it really feel like it was your own daughter that was getting married? And what were your true feelings about the wedding? Yeah, it. I did get quite emotional about it, actually. It was. It was quite, quite moving. Quite moving. What about you when you were when we saw you there in that scene getting married to Des? <laughs> I mean, did you like it? Did, did it quite appeal to you the whole I idea? Hated it. <laughs> Dressing up like that. Yeah. No, it's great. Funnily enough, everyone says, um, "Oh, it must be great to dress up." To to film a wedding scene is probably the hardest thing for the cast to do. It's the longest day because you're mm. in those enormous dresses. The day we filmed our scenes on location, it was pouring rain. Trying to keep the white dresses out of the mud was impossible. It and was of course, a you've filthy got day, actually, wasn't yeah, it? it was. And you've got all the cast sitting together, and it's a very long day, so it's not as much fun as it probably looks. No. And that's when the reality hits home. Um, but I guess while you're doing it, yeah, there is that sense that it's, you know, something. I found that with the birth as well, um, just instinctually, um, you sort of think, 
oh wow, this 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 is a real situation or could be, you know, and it's it's quite mm. amazing. So sometimes, yeah, it does have some bearing on your life. Mm. Well, there you go. The fanaticism that that you see here and the enthusiasm, tremendous enthusiasm for the series, is it, is it equal to what you get in Australia? It's hard for us to judge, or, or is, it, is it different? It is, but it, it's a different ratio, obviously, because of the fact mm. that there's less people. I mean, you, the viewing audience here is more than the population of Australia. I, I couldn't tell you what the exact figures are. Do you guys know in Australia? It's, it's well, we peaked, apparently, um, a few weeks, a couple of weeks ago. Um, our viewing audience here was 19 and a half million. Mm, but in Australia, I'm talking about what's the viewing audience oh. there? But it'd only be about. Well, well four yes, million. our rating system is rather different. different yeah. 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 But, but I suppose a lot has got to do with the fact that we show it twice a day here as well. Yeah. I mean, it is. It's yeah. still, um, Maybe, there's another yeah. show on the same network that we're on actually now called The Comedy Company, and The Comedy Company and Neighbours are still holding number one positions mm. throughout Australia. Okay, let's go to Battersea. Leslie Gilbert's on the line. Hi, Leslie. Hi. Hi, Leslie. Go Hi. on ahead. Uh, I'd like to ask Stefan, please. Yes. Um, first of all, are the housing sets that you use in Neighbours real houses? And if so, are they privately owned, or does the TV company have any rights to them or own them? <coughs> No, they're, they are real houses. Of course, um, the stuff that, when you see us indoors, that's all in the studio. And when you see us outdoors, outside the houses or in the backyards, the, the street and all of that, that, that is an actual street. Um, there was talk at the very beginning that Grundy's was possibly going to actually buy an entire street, which, uh, because of the success of the show now, I think it, it would have possibly been a wise move. But uh, as it turns out, they, they actually rent the street. Um, on a on a 12 monthly basis, but people do live because we never go inside the houses unless we perhaps sometimes might just walk inside a door or something, and that has to be um, with permission from the owners. That only uh, that's the only way we get it is if we've got that authority. Now Stephen Martin from Gloucestershire and Jonathan Mitchell from Chester both have read that Daphne dies. Have they? Right. <laughs> right. Does she? This well, is the I, British I, press I, again. <laughs> I'm not asking you is that true or not, but I will ask okay. you: Does she die or is she murdered? Um, <laughs> you don't have to tell. Um, <laughs> it's spoiling the storyline. Um, no, she's not. She's not murdered. Um, and yeah. <laughs> okay, well that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. So she dies, but she's not murdered. Okay. I we didn't know say that. she okay. dies either. You let's just have go, to wait and see. Let's go to Scammersdale. <laughs> Joyce Williams. Hi, Joyce. Hello. Hi, um, Joyce. I'd like to ask Anne a question, actually, uh, regarding when personal comments are made within the show about each other, how you all seem to tolerate it so much. Uh, the things that are said uh, between one another, uh, especially with Mrs. Mangle, and of course with Hillary that came to the wedding, mm -hmm. uh, if those type of things are mentioned here, uh, we'd be at one another's throats. <laughs> you'd actually, you know, you just wouldn't go to the wedding, you'd just be put outside the door and told to go. Oh, we often are at one another's throats. <laughs> <laughs> it's been an awfully nice way. Oh, well, I don't People know. I mean, my tangles with Mrs. Mangle are not nice at all. I mean... Mm. I don't know whether it's happened here, but at one stage I belted her with a newspaper. And actually, I got a bit <laughs> carried away, and poor old Vivian had a bruise on her arm afterwards. I think, I think Joyce would I probably enjoy have belted that, her with something else, wouldn't you, Joyce? I would, actually. I don't think she'd, she'd get away with it here as much. Uh, eight days in a five-day week, if you can comprehend that. Because what we do is we do two days rehearsal, uh, Monday and Wednesday. And then on Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, we tape in the studio. And Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, did I say right? No. Mm -hmm. Tuesday, oh, Thursday, less. Friday, yeah, so whatever. Far, so good. And Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, um, we do outside broadcast. So we're cramming eight days' work inside five. And then, of course, there's weekend stuff as well, isn't there? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's quite a lot anyway. You take the work home. Royal Command performs as in between. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. Yeah. Um, Mark Allen from Bolton uh, would like to know how do you all get on with Vivian Gray, who's Mrs. Mangle? in the cast. Is she as bad in real life? <laughs> She's wonderful. She, she has to be opposite. one of the most wonderful human yeah. beings on this really? earth. Really? <laughs> she is a lovely, Absolutely. lovely lady. She's fantastic. People mm. can't understand it when, when you say that she's really, she's shy and quiet and sort of comes into the green room and sits down and has a cup of tea and reads a script. And she's also quite eccentric. Oh, yeah. <laughs> best, best she can tell you wonderful sense mm. of humor. anything you want to know about cricket, <laughs> Vivian can tell you. Yeah. She has an amazing knowledge <laughs> on cricket and archaeology. She mm. loves archaeology. On a serious point then, we, we have read in the press, for what you can believe <laughs> what you read in the press, that she is going to give up the part, or has been forced to give up the part, because of hate mail that she's getting because her character is so nasty. Is there any truth in that? I don't think it's hate mail. It's the fact that there have been teenagers coming around and throwing stones at her cats. And really? Yeah. Mm. Yes. Mm. I mean, some people are quite stupid, and it's obviously they feel that she is the character. 
and to cherish for as long as we both shall live. This is my solemn vow and promise. This is my solemn vow and promise. Daphne, repeat after me. I, Daphne Rose, take you, Desmond Kingsley, to be my husband. I, Daphne Rose, take you, Desmond Kingsley, to be my husband. It's your last chance, Terry. Please, Paul. Everything between us is over. Paul, put it down, please. Please, Paul, I love you. Sam's not my baby. I lied to you. But that, that's absurd. You'd better sit down. You're not going to like what I've got to say. But if Sam's not your baby, then... Uh... Oh, no. He's Susan's baby. I'm sorry. Susan left Coffs Harbour after she broke up with Dad. He was being a real creep and... So she came down here. She just had to get away. And then she got really sick. How could you do this to me? Mum, I didn't mean to hurt you, I promise. I didn't know what else to do. Lady, I couldn't stop. I want my baby. Get her out of here. Sam! With an ageing vegetarian called Harold. Jim Robinson is a widower with four children and a mother-in-law called Helen. Jim's eldest son, Paul, is hard-bitten, or he was, until he met Gail, whom he married for money and because she seemed to bear an uncanny resemblance to Sue Ellen. They share their house at the moment with Jane. Once she was plain Jane, but now she seems to be trying to outdo Kylie Minogue on the glamour stakes. She's Paul's secretary, who's been kicked out by her grandmother, Mrs. Mangle. Uh, Mrs. Mangle. I hope you're following this. She is a mixture of Hilda Ogden, Doc Cotton and Dame Edna. <laughs> well, now, uniting the Robinsons and the Ramses in wedded bliss are Scott Robinson and Charlene Ramsey. We know that they're pop stars in real life, but on Ramsey Street nobody's realised that yet. Here is a snatch of their moving wedding ceremony. Charlene, Edna, will you have this man to be your wedded husband and live together in accordance with God's ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony? Will you love him, comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health, and, forsaking all other, keep you only unto him for as long as you both shall live? I will. Wonderful. So, will you please welcome, first of all, Fiona Cork, who is Gail, Stephen Dennis, who is Paul, Anne Haddy, who is Helen, Annie Jones, who is Jane, and Annie Jones, Jane. <laughs> is, it, is it true that, Jim, despite the bickering, you're all one big happy family? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> no egos. Oh. Well, you see, it's very confusing, this. I mean, if you're talking about um, the actors or you're talking about the characters, are there any egos? I think we're talking about the actors. We're oh, talking about you, Alan, not you, Jim. Oh, fine. Well, I look awfully like Jim, but I'm not really like him in any other way. What about you, Helen? Uh, tell me how the Royal Variety went. Did you enjoy it? Yes, very much. <laughs> <laughs> she said through strangled, strangled throat. Did you enjoy meeting the Queen Mother? Let yes, me very much indeed. Did you? Yes, she was very sweet. Is she a fan? So I believe. Yes. Yes. So I believe, yes. The Queen is reputed to be, isn't she? Yes, apparently. Yes, apparently. They, well, they we all hear all those it. stories, but, you know, None of it's true. What I don't understand is, I was reading about apparently it was a flop, Jim Allen, when it first happened in, in Australia. No, it wasn't a flop. It was I'm sorry. <laughs> you were in it then, at the beginning, were you? Yes, we had the first scene, I think. 
we three had the first scene. This was the first time out, but it was with another channel, another television mm. channel. I thought it was a flop. It wasn't a flop. It was the fact that, that that particular channel, as we understand it, could not afford it anymore. What, your fees were too high? No, 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 <laughs> no. They couldn't afford the programme anymore. That, that is as we understood it. Mm. But then suddenly it took off. Yeah, well, I mean... Another the... channel took it off. Yeah. Go on, Jim, you're aching to... We've sat you up the back there. <laughs> That's all right. No, I mean, uh, what happened was that in, in one... Uh, you know, in Australia, the way it works is this. You've got two major cities in Australia, Sydney and Melbourne, and for um, a series of any description to survive, it has to be successful in both cities. And as it happened, it wasn't too successful in Sydney, although it was very successful in Melbourne, and all the other cities around Australia, it was very successful. So they made the decision to can the show, but then Channel 10 decided, what a good idea, and they picked it up and off it, off it went and look at it now. Mm, somebody sold it to Britain and look at it now. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Gail, um, Fiona, it's very oh. difficult. You're doing very <laughs> well. I'm working hard on this. Driving hard. Um, we do sometimes remark on the kind of wobbling sets. The wobbling sets, oh, yeah. <laughs> well, it doesn't happen too often, but um, there was a time when, in one scene in, in Gail and Paul's house, when you go up the staircase, the, the wall, one of the walls <laughs> tends to a wobble bit. a bit. And um, there was a scene, especially when you walk up the stairs, and there was a scene I had to go up the stairs and um, it was wobbling. And I said, oh, look, is there any way we can stop it wobbling? Because I thought it might look a bit noticeable. And uh, so they said they'd do something. And anyway, we did the take and I went up the stairs and that was sort of the end of my bit in the scene. And I look around the corner and there, <laughs> there were the three props people holding <laughs> the wall up like this with their arms up against so it. It was really careful, funny. Careful how you slam the door yeah. to kind of nudge an elbow. Yeah, but I mean all, all sets like that. They get taken in and out so much that... Um, yes. Yeah. I know, you should see this one. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, this is new, this is new. I was just going to say, so you're talking about getting your set from Australia. Oh, I saw that in a shop here the other day. Well, this, this has no, been... No, the jug down there, the jug. The jug. Well, yeah. the jug may be, but the rest of it, I promise you, is yours. <laughs> you didn't know, you see, you don't know it's not there. Was it on the same here. plane? Hmm? Was it on the same <laughs> place? In the hole. Yeah, it's rather nice, I must. If you do the good polish, actually, but you sent Mrs. Mangle. Paul, I gather it's all going to get saucier. That's what they what, tell What, the show? Me. Yes. And, and you are leading the way in sauciness, that's what they say. <laughs> well, some more stories, guys. Uh, no, the neighbours can't get saucy. Come on, let's get serious. That's probably the, the best thing about our show and the reason it's popular not just here but in Australia as well and now in Europe as well is the fact that we're not into rapes and murders and hot sex all over the screen and this, that and the other. What do you I mean, mean you're just... committing adultery at the moment? Oh, all right, OK. <laughs> My grandson committing adultery. Well, he's getting quite close to it. Not that we ever see it, but you know. I mean, because you're 18 months, crystal. we're 18 months behind yeah, you. Is, is this crystal, crystal you're talking about? Crystal. I don't the know what blonde she means. Hair blonde thing? girl, and oh, you've been yeah. kissing in the car. Shh. Yeah. Yeah, and she, <laughs> she's not. And Lucy is frightfully upset. Yeah, Jane, you right. haven't haven't spoken. Jane, you're. You've suddenly turned into a kind of glamour boss. Yes, well, Jane has, yes. Jane has turned into a glamour Well, you, you were always a glamour boss. Uh, not a glamour boss, no. <laughs> <laughs> but are you... I, I mean, it has leaked out here again that Kylie Minogue is leaving, isn't she? And, and yes. So you're being kind of groomed... Well, no, not as such. That's um, Helen shaking her head. The papers answering. say, but it's never an, a conscious thing that was ever decided by anyone on our end, no. What do you think of Kylie leaving and, and uh, becoming a pop star? Um, I think fantastic. Good honour. She's doing incredibly well. And we all think that. Terribly mm -hmm. proud of her. Yes. You don't resent yeah. that at all. No, well, yeah. should we? No, I know you should. Not. It's just that, that, as you say, inevitably papers run stories like that. And I mean, yeah. let's get the record straight. Well, the, the we papers better get their records straight yes. very shortly because yeah. well, it is not. Mind, no, not in slightest. The thing about it is, we're just ultimately proud of the girl. Yes. Yes. I mean, it's really not as if someone's going to stay in a series for years and years, at one stage or another, they will move well, on somewhere on. else. Yeah. What they do is, mm. I mean, we wish everyone who leaves the show every success in what they do, and Kylie's, it's fantastic. It's done very well. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, do, you, do you worry about, do you worry about typecasting? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's they hard to say, you them. don't know about typecasting, I suppose, and, until it comes up. It's, and if you can go to an audition for something that you've done after this and, and show that you can play another part, well, it's, basically up to you a lot, I think. But you're well, happy with I your part, Alan, Jim? Well, I... I Alan, oh, no. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm very, very happy. I mean, I'm happy from the start. I, I mean, I look at it this way, that um, 
the people that are casting for other roles, if they haven't got enough imagination to see that an actor's playing that mm. role or an actor can play another role, well, then they shouldn't be casting. Right? You've taken your trousers down this week. Have Did I? you know that? Fine. Yes, for the female <laughs> doctor. I can oh. see romance blossoming. Right. Can you? You reckon yes. someone seeing my buttocks would probably decide the way? <laughs> <laughs> Have a romance with me. <laughs> well, I can smell it. I can smell <laughs> it. Get <laughs> <laughs> Why did you think we sat you over the back? <laughs> I don't know. I'm Listen, thank you very much indeed. I'm going to let you relax a minute. Let me just um, ask the audience to say for you, to you, just for the moment, Annie Jones, Anne Haddy, Stephen Dennis, Fiona Cork, Alan Dale, thank you very much indeed. <laughs> What's wrong? It's that pain in my back again. Well, maybe you should sit down for a while. It's sitting in the one position for too long that gives me backache. Oh. Look, I, I really think you should lie down. I'll be all right. If the pain gets any worse, Beverly can give me a couple of painkillers. <laughs> if she's still speaking to me. Do you really think there'll be any trouble? If Beverly and Jim dislike each other as much as Des says they do, then this could turn out to be a bigger fiasco than the Ramsey Street Olympics. <laughs> It's my day out, and I'm not going to let anything ruin it. Neighbors, everybody. Morning. Morning. Buongiorno. Uh, uh, yes. uh, Daphne phoned last night and asked me to make some more meat and pies. Oh. Oh, Harold, for goodness sake, what do you think I've got in there? A tiger snake? Well, you know how I feel about meat. Harold, there is pie crust between you and any meat, not to mention the tea towel. Yeah, Michael, look, will you take these, oh, these things and put them in the kitchen? No worries. Oh, Harold, I'm sorry. I know it's not easy. I, I was afraid you might resign. Well, I couldn't let Daphne down, could I? But I can tell you it wasn't an easy decision. in Australia, even oh. if he doesn't. Oh, she's a good all-rounder, isn't she? <laughs> she's very good, isn't she? Well, how do you explain the popularity of Neighbours here? Ah, oh, I think Australia's flavour of the month at the moment. Also, I think that the British audiences are used to seeing outback stories from Australia, historical dramas. I think this is probably the first time that they've actually seen Australian suburbia. Yes. And I think maybe that's what's appealing about it. But have you seen EastEnders here? Yes, I've seen mm. it in Australia. I mean, yes. it's, it's not it's not on now, but it used to be. It didn't go down too well, did it? I think part of the fact, the problem there was that it was on the ABC, and a lot of people don't watch the ABC. Is that what it is? Yeah. But you could understand the accent. That was oh, absolutely. Because no apparently uh, America had problems with that. Oh, but America has problems oh. with any kind of accent oh, that yes. he's not yes. American. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Terrible problems with Australian accents. Yes. <laughs> really? Oh, yes. So you're not selling in America? Not yet. No, no, no. But a few years ago, I'm um, sorry, Rabbit on, Smithy, I'm going on and on. Um, it's not like Australian her at all. No, it's not. Australian movies had to be dubbed. What, for, in, from, in, in America? Yes. Yeah. Right. Oh, yes. But now, Smithy, as yes. she calls you. Yes, you're, you're, you're also one of the script writers, isn't Yes, you? I am, yes, yes. I've been for two years now. Is what a difficult? dynamic talent. Be quiet. Nobody asked you Be quiet. She <laughs> will come to you in a minute. Am I allowed to throw the flowers? Is yeah, there you anything? Can, as you can do what you okay, like. Okay, fine. Come on, how difficult is it to write these scripts and do you write all the best lines for yourself? No, no, and no, no, my agreement is that I don't write episodes that I'm in. Because I can't, I, I, I go blank when I have to, well, when I have to say any lines, I go blank. But, <laughs> but particularly, I cannot write for myself, I just can't do it. So you have to deliver his lines, Craig? Is most of the time, I, I don't like to brag. But <laughs> most yeah, of the time he doesn't I do. write very good ones for me either. <laughs> yeah. I, that's, well, they won't be from now on. But, um, <laughs> <coughs> no, and yet I had to write for my son who was supposedly a clone of Harold. And I wrote that perfectly well. And I thought, what's the matter with this? I can't write for myself, and yet I can write for a clone of Harold. So, so I guess. Yourself. Yes. Hmm. Mm. Now, you're the latest hunk, Craig. I beg your pardon? The latest hunk. Do you call them hunks in Australia? Uh, well, yes, we go with hunk. Heartthrob's another popular one yeah. we like to use. <laughs> oh, it is. Uh, hang on. Heartthrob, and what's the other one we like to use? Um, Idiot. Yes. <laughs> He can be so rude sometimes, can't he? Don't applaud, idiot! <laughs> so what's it like being mobbed? 
From obscurity um, to stardom in four months, I know, this guy. Incredible, isn't it? <laughs> Ex-plumber. I never used to get mobbed when I was a plumber. Um, it's interesting. It, um, it's funny, the, the, um, the English folk are a little bit different to the, the Australians. Though. They're most polite when they mob you. When, when on mass, no, really, when on mass and they, they sort of crowd you and stuff, it's, it's sort of, oh, pardon me for rubbing against you, but would you sign this? And, oh, excuse me, I didn't mind to bump you there. I didn't mean to bump you there, but would you sign this? Where is it? Just, you know, they're very polite. In Australia, they give me it's an old or else. Yeah. Yes. yeah, sign this, Rockland. <laughs> Yeah, Daphne, you're supposed to be largely pregnant, but I see nothing there. I have a beautiful flat stomach, do you want me to boast? <laughs> <laughs> it must be the longest pregnancy in television well, history. it certainly felt like it, and as I said to you earlier, it's put me off the real thing, I think. <laughs> <laughs> forever. Yes, forever. But, uh, I'm right in thinking, Otto, you're not in it anymore. It's a strange set of circumstances. I actually left the show about a year ago in Australia, but I'm still on air here for about another six months. So you still know me as Daphne over here. And why did you leave? Well, simply to do other things, to get back and do some theatre work and, and things like that. Well, we can't ask you how... We keep, we've given well, away... You can't ask me how I leave. You mustn't mm. ask me how I leave. That's a surprise. All right. Can I ask you, um, is the baby all right? Yes, the baby's fine. Daphne's not after it, but the baby is. <laughs> <laughs> Are you knocked out by the success of it all? It is amazing. I think, it's, I think mm. we love you because it's such a full of sunshine and, and, and well, bright eyes. You I should think be that's on location reason. with us sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I, saw an um, I saw an umbrella this week. Oh, you yes. didn't? Yeah, I did. I saw uh, the Helen. Fiona had one. Helen was walking down. When she walked oh. past Mrs Mangle and wouldn't talk to her, you know, she had... Oh, this, is, this is long ago in your book. In, in the middle of winter, we're, we're standing in, in Ramsey Street, we've got thin cotton shirts on and the producer will all thermals underneath her. the producer will come out and the director will come out and say well, come on the poms think it's the sun's always out which I want right people don't realize it gets quite cold in Melbourne oh yes it's jolly cold here for you lot Oh, well, yes. we experienced quite a lot of cold in Melbourne before we came here. So Did you? We, mm. we oh, were climatised. We imagine, as you <laughs> say, it's permanent summer there. You're in panto, both of you now. Yes, I'm doing a pantomime up in Stockport called Mother Goose. Yes, and I'm at Oxford doing Jack and the Beanstalk. Is that fun? Well, I haven't started yet. I've just read the script. But she's a very Dame Edna type fairy. She's called Gladiola. <laughs> <laughs> that is the point, really. I mean, our image of you, beyond the sunshine of neighbours, is a kind of mixture of Crocodile Dundee and Dame Edna Everett, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, is that what it's like down there? Yes. Well, yes. Ah, yes. I think that's a reputation is to be avoided, really. <laughs> well, you can see the macho image yeah. in front of you. you <laughs> Crocodile what you get. Smith. Yes. <laughs> What's your image of us then? What's the, what's the Australian image and do we live up to it? Of the English man, first of all? Oh, uh, yes, I think so. No, I think we've got you I don't think I pegged quite well. I think. Yes, I think rugged in a very nice way. <laughs> what, the women? No, the men. No, the no, women. Women. no. 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 You fool. No, no offence, no. Careful. No, I was talking about the fellas. <laughs> He's oh. nearly got away with it there. Are you going to, you play the guitar as well, are you going to nip off to the pop scene, the same as Jason and Kylie? Ah. Uh, when you get famous Not enough. just at the moment. Hard Not just at the moment. Enough. I am. Um, but keep your ears pinned. I may do, I don't know, a rap Christmas album with <laughs> Luciano Pavarotti or something. I don't know. <laughs> but at the moment, he's trying to get Henry right, aren't you? Yes. Well, exactly. <laughs> Henry's doing very well. He's very well reformed. Thank you very much, you four, Ian Smith and Charleston. <gasps> Elaine Smith, Smith and Craig McLachlan. Thank you. Well done. Another lingering look at that neighbour's wedding of the year. on the subject of country living. Until then... G'day! G'day! G'day.
right, okay. And, and it's about six weeks in advance in Australia. Mm. And over here, it's 18, 18 months. Mm. We're 18 months behind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, so then on that point, Tim Wright from Hornchurch wants to know when the heck are you going to have this baby? He thinks it's the longest pregnancy on record. <laughs> that was commented on last night. You should have gone through it. <laughs> <laughs> It certainly felt well, like the longest soon. pregnancy. Are we, are we near? Well, I hope so. I hope, I'm just thinking, if you had the fall, it's fairly soon. We've had the second fall. You've had the that second right? fall and the third one. Right. And it's not. Um, it's fairly soon. It's right. not too long to go. I think it's about another four or five weeks. That's good. Yeah. That's good. You have great well, you look, to all you look of you. the better for it after it, I must say. You look very, very well. <laughs> Thanks. Right. Anne Adair from Tyne and Weir. Hi, Anne. Hello. How are you? Fine, thanks. Right, what do you want to know? I want to speak to Elaine, please. Where you go. Speaking. Good morning, Elaine. Good morning. Um, now that you're free from neighbours, um, what are your immediate plans on a professional basis after you've finished uh, the pantomime Mother Goose? Right, uh, well, I left Neighbours in Australia 12 months ago and I've mm -hmm. been doing some stage shows in Australia over the past year. I'm over here to do, as you said, a pantomime in Stockport called Mother Goose and also recording uh, Jack and Ori, oh, which really? I used to watch when I was four years old, so I'm very excited about doing that. You're recording Jack and Ori where? In, in, Britain? in Britain? In Britain, yeah. 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 yeah, and it's being shown, I think, sometime in January. Okay. Um, reading an Australian story called The Best Kept Secret, and then probably staying, going for a couple of weeks holiday, and then probably staying here a little bit longer and see if... I can get Absolutely. some stage work over here. Actually, people will be able to see a, lo a lot more of you. Who else is in Panto? I know, Anne, you're um, in Panto. Yes, in yeah? Oxford. In Oxford. What are you doing there? Uh, Jack and the Beanstalk. Uh -huh. Playing the flower and vegetable fairy. Oh, very Her good. Her name's Gladiola, would you believe? Well, that's original, isn't it? <laughs> that's good. Right, let's go. And thank you very much indeed for phoning in. I'd like to go to Playstow in London. Jennifer Fox. Hello, Jennifer. Hello. Hi, Jennifer. What would you like to ask? This is, like this is for uh, Craig, isn't it? Yeah. Right. Craig, um, if you, if Henry was chosen to be the next sex symbol of Neighbours, would you accept the role? You mean he's not the, the, the sex symbol at the moment? Jennifer, I think we need to sort something out here. <laughs> yeah. The next sex symbol. It's a funny thing, isn't it, the word sex symbol, heart throb, all that sort of thing. I think, I think Neighbours is in dire need of a new heart throb, and I'm just the man to fill the boots, I'll tell you. <laughs> I'm He's ready to go. As well. Jennifer, <laughs> um, Jennifer who, who is the heartthrob at the moment? Cool. Oh, oh, oh hey, good evening. <laughs> you, like, you like the JR sort of character then, the nasty guy, do you? No, I just like his looks. Oh, really? <laughs> there you are. You've got a fan there. Well, what, uh, <laughs> what I want to know, actually, Craig, yeah. is how come you're this uh, such a hunk of man in Neighbours, which you won't deny, but how come he hasn't got a girl? What's he doing wrong? It's a huge worry, isn't it? <laughs> um, and uh, Henry, in Henry's eyes, Henry sees himself as a real, as a real smoothie, very much the James Bond of Ramsey Street. But unfortunately, the girls don't see him that way, and um, he has he has a bugger of a time. And, and it's tough if you're trying to have this. People people are asking, um, do you consider yourself a heartthrob or a sex symbol? It's a bit tough when you've got no women as you know as a track record. I'm You'll get the sympathy <laughs> vote now. I yeah. great pleasure to introduce to you some very, very good friends of mine, the cast of Neighbours. Oh, good day. I'm Paul Robinson, who plays Stephen Dennis on Neighbours. Hang on. Are you confused? And they said life in Ramsey Street was easy. <laughs> we do two shows a day over here. One at 1.30 and one at 5.30. Take me. I'm on my honeymoon, and this twice a day is killing me! <laughs> right now, I'd like to introduce my dad and my next-door neighbour, Jim and Madge. I thought we were going to do this song together. Well, that's what we're here for, isn't it? Yes, of course we are. Yeah, just to show these nice people that we really do all get along together. Yeah. We're not at all like those characters we play in Ramsey Street. No. We're all mates. Yeah. Half a minute doing the show. <laughs> yes, we have such fun. He plays an ugly, charmless character on screen. <laughs> but we all love him. What do you mean, ugly, charmless character? These love bites are not all self-inflicted, you know. Some of us have met Janet Street Porter. Let's just sing the song. A what? Hi, what? everyone. Oh, this oh. is wonderful, isn't it? Oh. Really reflecting the friendly atmosphere of our program. Oh, here, here. Yes, we're always mucking around, having a great time, aren't we? <laughs> what about the time we snuck into your dressing room and put gin in your throat spray? 
Darling, there's always gin in my throat spray. <laughs> All right, where's Scott, the world's oldest living schoolboy? <laughs> Call that living? <laughs> Hold on. Where is Mrs. Mangle? Oh, do you think she forgot to come? Oh, are you kidding? Ah, she's got amnesia, insomnia and alopecia. Yeah, she stays awake all night trying to remember where she left her comb. Oh, come on, you lot, stop it. We're over here having fun and meeting our friends, the Poms. Yes, and, and I... we want to sing our song for them. Now, come on. Right. A one, one a, a two, two. A, a one. one. Hello, two. everyone. I really am enjoying my stay here in London. Now, for those of you who don't watch Neighbours, and I hope there aren't too many of you, I play Paul's grandmother. They say I don't look my age. No, but she used to. <laughs> Just for that, I'll do a still life of you buying a round of drinks. Now, come on, to stop it. Let's just sing the song. Okay. A one, what? A two. two. Hi, Hi, everybody! Ah. There will now be a pregnant pause. Hey, everyone, now. Sorry, we're late. Late? Seems like 18 months already. <laughs> that was a bit of a shock to me. You know, I didn't think Des could do anything right. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah? Look, for this special occasion, I've uh, written a special poem. Dad has written a poem. Aussie neighbours are a breed apart. Gutsy folk with a lot of heart who enjoy a beer and never get silly, watch footy and cricket and always chant, Lily! <laughs> yes, indeed, we enjoy our sport. We have a variety of calls. The pitch, the field, the tennis court, and of course, Pat Cash's balls. Hey, all... Des! Most Aussie males have the sex appeal of Clive James. Yeah, or the sophistication of Paul Hogan. The third leg of Rolf Harris. Pat! <laughs> or the animal magnetism of Harold Bishop. Everyone. Awfully sorry I'm late. <laughs> Where were you? In the shower. Don't get your nut cutlets wet. No, just a minute. I am nothing like the character I play. Well, I mean, I put it to you. <laughs> Do I look anything like a sexless, pompous, teetotaling idiot? Yes. yes. No, you're not teetotal. Yes, and I'm not an eavesdropper either. You mean to say there's no truth in the rumour that you went to hospital and had the key taken out of your ear? And that remark is a little like your hair. Very brittle and not really fair. Ooh, <laughs> come on, you two. Ian. <laughs> Harold! Oh, right. We are being ourselves tonight. Yeah, Madge, uh, Charleston's right. Let's just get it together and do the song, will we? Right. Because I do like to sing now I'm going straight. Yeah, that Henry's going straight. <laughs> we'll just do the song for you. <laughs> One, oh, a two. two. Oh, oh, well, do you know where everyone... Oh, hello. That's funny. <laughs> I didn't hear a gale warning. <laughs> oh, that's really original, Steph. Fiona's name. Well, he's hardly likely to say funny I didn't hear a Fiona warning, is he? All right. I wish Dad was here. Now, don't you go bringing him into it. I mean, that is all I ever hear. Rob, Rob, Rob. Rob, are you having a crack at me, you big beanbag? I told you I was only driving the car. Oh, get away. <laughs> Neighbours should be good to one another. Remember, a smile is the shortest distance between friends. Oh, dear, now I know why our old man walked out on her. Yeah, I regret that every day of my life. He left because of just one little thing I said. Dinner is served. Oh, shut up. Yeah, you leave my mother alone. I'm not your mother. I'll strew the mine orphan now. You just watch your tongue, Ned Kelly. Look, everybody, shut up! How can you all fight when I'm so unhappy? Oh. My father never loved me when I was little, and now he tries to win it over with money. And it isn't enough. Oh. Did you hear that? Oh, come on. Isn't it enough? Everybody needs good neighbours, just a friendly wave each morning, helps to make a better day.
what's it? What's that? Uh, old, uh, old tiny minnow. Tiny minnow. Oh, and she marvellous. Eh? I should be so lucky. Yeah. 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 What about our call day? Neighbours. Yeah, 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 Paul, you were just hiding behind this marriage of convenience bin. You've fallen in love with her and you're too scared to even tell her. What... what a wimp. All right. All right, I do love her. So what? I mean, she obviously doesn't give a damn about me, so just shut your face before I shut up for you. Go ahead. It'd be worth it. But at least I got you to admit the truth. Yeah, Mum, you can start by getting the ice back for Dad. So you both want to get home. Well, won't this be fun? Gail? Gail, wait, please. I don't want you to go. The fact is... I love you. I said, I love you. Oh, God, do you know how long I've been hoping you'd say that? I love you too, so much. You're silly, haven't we? Yeah. Oh, look at them. Look at them, isn't it grey? You bet. Beverly and I would like to say how much we appreciate most of our good friends and neighbours coming along to help us celebrate this very special occasion. And from now on, all the drinks are on me. There is one, uh, there is one, may I? There is one condition, however. When Helen hands around the hat, everybody has to put their car keys in. Uh, Jim? Jim? Uh, everyone except Harold. Oh, on you, Harold! Because whether you drink or not, I'm sure you realise this is the best time of year to be off the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, excuse me for a moment, please. My youngest has a newsflash. <laughs> I'm told, excuse me, I'm told, I'm told, Gail has not taken the trip to the States, but has decided to settle here in Ramsey Street and live happily ever after. Yes! Which makes it much easier for me to say the next thing I want to say, which is... Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Everybody, let's dance! One, two, three, go! Handle it. Yeah, I suppose. Actually, I'm glad we found that diary, otherwise Ross could have wormed his way out of it again. Ah, nothing like the three S's to make a bloke feel good. You know, shave, shower... Henry! Sh shampoo... <laughs> feel like a new man. Don't build our hopes up, Henry. Ah. All right, everybody. Power time. Power? What about? You big guy. 
Well, since we'll be all living together pretty soon, it makes sense to sit down and work out a few ground rules, don't you reckon? Well, um... Henry, Harold and I are busy. It was your idea. It'll only take ten minutes. Here's a couple of notes. Now. Henry has got a point here. All in the spirit of Glasnost, eh? <laughs> yeah. All right. Mike, I know they're not going to send you to jail. But I just want you to know that whatever happens, you can count on me. Yeah, I know. Thanks. Man, where have you been? I've been worried about you. So I see. Everything cool, mate? How'd it go? Not good. Those guys have really set me up. Honestly, I just don't know how some people can live with themselves. So where's it leave you? Well, because I went after him, the charge is grievous bodily harm. Well, what does that mean, exactly? It means if I'm found guilty, I could go to jail for up to seven years. Everybody needs good neighbours With a little understanding You can find the perfect blend Neighbours should be there for one another that's when good neighbors become good friends. Looking for Scott Robinson. Well, you found him. You? Yeah, what can I do for you? <laughs> My name's Stavros Papadopoulos. Oh, that's right, you're related to Poppy, aren't you? Yeah, I'm a fiancé. It's the first I've heard of it. Well, you know now, so stay away from her. Uh, hang on a second. Well, if she's engaged to you, then how come she doesn't wear a ring? Well, OK. So it isn't official? Yet. But it will be. So back off. Well, not unless she tells me to. Look, my woman doesn't go out with other blokes. Listen, mate. All we're doing is working on the same project together. Not anymore, you're not, mate. I'm warning you. Stay away from her. I'll keep seeing her as long as we're working together, and after that, if she wants to. No way. Stop, not leave it, will you? You, rack off. It was a bit heavy, man. You get the message. Listen, if you want to see Poppy, if you're really keen on Just me. drop it, will you? It took me a long time to track this down. It is a particularly fine aftershave. Hmm? Oh, gee, it's, um, <clears throat> it's powerful. Yes, yes, well, I'm going to wear it on our anniversary night. Women are supposed to find it irresistible, you know. Well, Madge is going to be quite overwhelmed. Oh, I do hope so. Well, I think a gesture like this should be on an anniversary night, don't you? Here you go, Kerry. <clears throat> oh, thanks, Madge. Right. What's that poem? What? There's a very peculiar smell in here, isn't it? Uh, well, it's a, um... Maybe oh, I... it's probably my perfume. I picked it up when I was travelling in Asia. <laughs> oh, sorry. For the morning. Oh. Whatever is that dreadful stench? Aftershave. That's Katie. All right. I take this watch and place it into the bag. Oh, I hope you know what you're doing, sport. Good tomorrow. Steady on. Are you sure about this, Toby? Um, that's a real watch, but not a toy. Don't worry. I just open the bag. So, Toby, you idiot! It's my watch. Oh, no worries. Mangle the magician will now work his magic. I Kazam, I Shazam, Timbuktu, good as new. My watch, it's okay. Excellent. Oh, good one, mate. Can you teach me? Then I could be assistant. OK. That's very impressive, Toby. Very impressive. But look, when you take someone else's watch, would you? <laughs> Come on, darling. You can see Toby tomorrow. <laughs> oh, no, not again. A minute. Will you give it back? Now leave the money alone. Keep your shirt on. It is not play money, Mr Mangle. He's not playing. He's demonstrating one of his skills. There is no skill in playing silly tricks. Now, if the three of you will excuse me... Sky will enjoy being with other kids at crate. 
Oh, well, there's no substitute for a mother's care. Still, your help will be welcome. Well, it's about time I did something to earn my keep. Well, we'll be off for our walk. Watch. <laughs> this must be good. Ah, oh, it's a piece of cake. I worked this one out the first time I saw it. Here, I'll show you. Dad! No probs, mate. Got this one sussed. Dad, that's Mr. Robinson's watch. Yeah, so? He didn't make the switch. Oh. Oh. You mean that really is my watch? Oh, wonderful. That was a gift from Bear for my oh, birthday. Yeah. Oh, sorry, mate. I, I can fix the watch. But no. About Mrs. Galanos and her cousin. What am I to do? No, you didn't want anything to eat, did you, Madge? You're going to be your own boss. What do you reckon? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, great. When do we start? The sooner the better. I can supply you with 100 plain T-shirts to get you started, but the printing equipment, you're going to have to chase up yourself. Oh, well, that, that's no worries. Yeah, 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 you just don't see it, do you? He steals my plants, thereby ruining my chances a day before the competition, and then he invites me over there to insult me in front of the whole street. All right! Don't listen to reason, but don't go dragging everyone else in on it. We've got our own problems, Harold. That's how wars start. <laughs> we shall fight them in the streets. We shall fight them in the gardens. And we shall never surrender. Yes. <clears throat> Look, I don't have to take his insults. I got my pride too, you know. It looks great. Are you gonna let it grow up on the carport? No. Did he clobber him? Look, I didn't lay a finger on him. Did he clobber you? No. I want you to get into any more trouble because of me. Don't worry about it. All I want to do is help you through this, OK? That's all that matters. Matt, you want to set up the cab stretcher? Um, yeah, no worries. Thanks, Jazz. I appreciate you sharing. Thanks. It's all right. So how's Adelaide? Um, it's good, yeah. <laughs> Surprise, Matt hasn't mentioned you before. Oh, we haven't known each other very long. Really? You haven't known each other very long? I see. Tell me all about it. Oh, you caught the program, eh? Yeah, it was really good, really, really moving. Is that girl gonna be okay? Well, I hope so. I'm not really qualified to handle those sorts of problems. No plants, of course the first place you're gonna flog them off to is a nursery. They're probably as innocent as I am. Oh, it wouldn't be the first time that your so-called friends have been mixed up in some sort of shady activity. Oh, that's it, that does it. Stop, stop, it. stop it. it! I've had enough of this. Don't you Will you stay out of this, Harry? Dad! Don't you dad me, I'm not going to apologise to well, you. Well, I wouldn't accept it if you did. Well, you've already admitted my plants, so hand them over. Take a long one of a short pair, I want my plants. You'll get your plants. But are you stand out in the middle of Ramsey Street and just admit that you are wrong? I... I... Never. I'm not changing my mind, not for you, not for anybody. All right. What about what I thought? Well, of course I was. Well, I must admit, I am a bit happier about there being a crowd, but... But? Well, Kay sounds like a very insecure girl, and you're lumbering her with two more people to deal with. I knew you should have told her the truth in the first place. You play it. Yeah, Ryan, show me how. It's called circular breathing. You breathe in and out at the same time. Uh -huh. You ready? <laughs> <laughs> It must have been like a dream, having a shipboard romance. Yeah, just like an affair to remember. I mean, you must have felt like you actually dreamt it. Des, you are so perceptive. That's exactly how I feel. You know, when I was a kid, I had this imaginary friend. I'd talk to him, I'd take him everywhere I went. Did you do that? So did I. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, I mean, when you get older, you grow out of it. Except, um, well, some people, especially if they're lonely, they still do it. Still have imaginary friends. Yes. Well, you know, if somebody's unhappy, their life's a bit dull, they become mixed up, you know? They, they begin to think that their dreams are, in fact, reality. I'll get it, you guys. 
You know, it's fantastic being able to say you guys again instead of just saying Matt. <laughs> Hi, it's you! I never believed that you'd be here so soon. Guess who it is, guys? It's Roger! <sighs> well, now, I'll leave you one with again. That's it. He's certainly becoming one of the family, isn't he? Well, he is one after all. Yeah, true. Ah, it's no good. I've got to tell you both. Well, we were going to keep it a secret and announce it at a small party for both families. But seeing Christina's blab to Carolina, I think I'm entitled to tell you both. What? What happened? Christina's pregnant. Got it in one grand. Oh, darling, that's <laughs> wonderful. Well done, mate. Thanks, Dad. This time I'll be able to have my whole family with me. I'll be able to be a real dad. It's like you, ain't. I just hope I can be half as good. You'll be fine. Chris, what's wrong? You haven't had an accident, have you? No, your car's fine. Oh, I don't care about my car. I care about you. What's wrong? Dr. Dawson had some bad news. Is there something wrong with the baby? I'm not pregnant. What? I never have been. But you seem so sure. Well, apparently all the stress that I was under with the court case threw things out of whack. The point is, I'm not pregnant, OK? And do you think that I'd even talk myself into morning sickness? <laughs> Maybe one not I? Oh, you were horrid. <laughs> oh, you're supposed to say I was as beautiful then as I am now. Oh, well, I couldn't tell a lie, could I? Oh, I think we should take more photos of this house. Well, where? Well, us, together, in this house and out the front. Why this house? Because it's such a nice house. <laughs> Cody, can you just sit No, there? I'm just going to go and get I the camera. I'll talk to you, Tom, please. Cody, look, I know something's something's going on. It's got something to do with your mum, your dad and this house, hasn't it? Mum and dad are just thinking of moving away, that's all. Why? Oh, I don't know. They're trying to split us up, aren't they? No, no, it's nothing like that. Well, where would you be moving to? Not too far away, hopefully, but I can't help thinking that if I'm not nearby, you'll forget about me, just like Josh has forgotten about Melissa. Oh, don't be stupid. Look, even if I had to travel all the way across town every night to see you, I would. Congratulations! Congratulations! Yay! Oh, I'm sorry, darling, but I couldn't give you the secret. No one's here told Caroline. We're both delighted for you. Come on, let's wet the baby's head. Yeah, good, good idea. But only one glass for you. We can't be too careful, eh? <laughs> and I would just like to say that this little lady here has made me the happiest man in the world. Mm -hmm. Just knowing that Chrissy is carrying my child is the happiest gift she could give me. Thank you, darling. To Chrissy and the bub. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers. Chrissy and the bub. Yes. <laughs> Can I take that for you? You're a friend of Jim's, aren't you? I beg your pardon? Jim Robinson, I saw you talking to him earlier. Yes, I know him quite well. Nice bloke. Terrific the way he's helping Dorothy out with the campaign. I reckon she'll romp at him. Is that so? Yeah, she deserves it, all the bad luck she's been having lately. Yes, well, um, <clears throat> she has had a rather hard time of it. I'll say. Madge Bishop was telling me all about it. You know, she was married to a criminal. Real con man, they reckon. Poor thing. Yeah, and that business with the counterfeit money. Oh, she was lucky to get out of that one. Indeed. But, but mud does tend to stick, doesn't it? Still, she's a survivor, eh? Yes, I mean, to look at her, no one would suspect she had such an interesting past. At least it's not one of them dirty, flaming great rocks, mate. I mean, people just think they're in bad taste, don't they? But yeah. Like that jacket. Didn't Josh give you a go, eh? Oh, yeah, big joke. <laughs> See you, Bob. See ya. They called the search off, haven't they? I'm sorry, Mrs Bishop, there wasn't any point in continuing. I see. Would you pass my thanks on to everyone involved? They've been very helpful. Sure. Don't want to miss this peak hour. Go on, Chuck.
I thought we could take our lunch and sit on the grass by the lake. A uh, bit of a problem. I've got to wait for the lunch for the boys. Ah. Well, how long have you got? Half an hour. Is that all? I think I'll have to speak to your boss about that. I suppose Todd and Lucy both try to get out of dinner tonight. No. Why do you say that? Just the way they looked at you when you accepted for them. Tepati! today, I know we can make a go of this. Baby. Yeah. What? You're beautiful. No, oh, I yeah. am. Oh. I'll just grab Zach. That must be a dull old yarn. <laughs> you turned into a pretty slow reader. Oh, I'll be in my room. What are you doing? Nothing. What? Aaron's Burr News article. Yeah, something like that. No, show me. Daddy, rack off. <laughs> Daddy, give it back. You rack off. <laughs> give it back, will you? The princess from Corral are playing in three acts. Just shut up. Australian boy, I love you. Princess, oh, I love you too. Oh, what? Uh, brother, you cannot see my sister. She's not for the likes of you. This is about your mother, hey? Look, just cool it, will you? I'm gonna change those bits before I take to school. Yeah, well, you better, or Vikram will come after you with a dagger. Spare me, oh, Prince. Forget it, Jack. Take that and that and that. Yes, you think you're funny, Danny, but you're not, all right? <laughs> you're the one that's funny. Show that to Lava and she'll die laughing. <laughs> a dagger. It's not bad, actually. 
about the bread from the restaurant. Another supplier's come round. Oh, um, well, I suppose we can try a small order and see what they're like. Who are they? Basil's Bakery. Oh, okay. oh thank you. Um, could you hang on a minute? <laughs> Maybe I should come back later. That's a good idea. OK, see ya. Give us half an hour. Right on. Bye. Yeah, well, shut up. You know what this girl's been up to. Start walking. He's been writing a play that's on. It's just so easy to stir. Yes, well, I might make you take the blame for it. No, you wouldn't be able to afford the fee. What's the play about? Oh, it's autobiographical. It's all about his... Morning, tax dodgers. <laughs> Did we get our reading done last night? <clears throat> oh, I've had enough of that garbage from my parents. I don't need it from you. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, guys, Deb's coming back from the clinic this Arvo, and, and I was thinking... Oh, that must have been difficult. That maybe we should throw a bit of a party, a, a welcome back sort of thing. What do you reckon? Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah. Glenn? There's no question about it. And it has to stick with the responsibilities. That's all there is to it. Mm, I know. Hannah, where are you? Sorry. Molly, here's some bacon. Yes, Molly. Make it feel better. Have you fed Holly this morning? I was just about to. Feed her now before it gets forgotten. She does get hungry like the rest of us, you know. No, she doesn't. Everyone keeps feeding her. She's fine. No, she's not. She's feeling neglected and making a nuisance of herself. Feed her now. Come on, Holly. Come on. Come on. Come on. Who's picking up Debbie this afternoon? Well, that'd be a traditional male or female job. Don't worry, I'll do it. Only if it fits in comfortably within your schedule. I'm sure it will, Philip. Hannah, are you nearly ready? I'll drop you at school on the way to the shop. Oh, thanks. Bye. Bye, bye. I'm oh, sorry, Hannah. Bye, bye, darling. Uh, darling. Julie, can you drop me off at the coffee shop, please? I oh, no trouble. I shan't be long. I have a bit to do with Philip, so I don't know what time I'll be home. Take your time. I'll see you at the shop later, Julie. Oh, don't forget the washing. Good as done. A snack. And don't get too coffee. <laughs> you wouldn't be worried that I'm coming out on top of this little contest, would you? Never in a million years. Bye-bye. Bye. You have an easy morning. I'm sure I will. <laughs> ah, good day, Gab. This time, take a sec. Don't have a sec. How long will it be? Well, quite a while, Rick. I've got three interviews for the PA out there and I don't know when I'm going to fit them in. Well, I'll talk while you're doing that. Oh, well, spit it out. It's, it's about my job. What about your job? Well, I'm employed by Lasseter's, right? And I'm based at the waterhole. And Lasseter's is selling the waterhole, so, so where do I go next? What do I do? Um, that hasn't been worked out. I'll discuss it with Helen and Rosemary and I'll get back to you. Well, could I ask when? Well, as soon as I can. <laughs> Gab, it's just... My job's on the line here. I, I just want to find out. Look, you won't be left stranded, Rick, I promise. For one thing, Rosemary plans to revive the Face of Lassiter's promotion, so you'll be involved in that. Really? Mm. Oh. oh, damn it! I'll, I'll, I'll get back <gasps> to you, Gab. That foolish. <laughs> Sick from guts and all of my buns, are you? Serves you right. No better next time. I'll drive you there if you like. You wouldn't mind, darling. No, no. You won't let it rest until you find out who this Ted guy is, will no, you? I've been thinking about him all night. Oh, I'll get back. Right. Be signing anyway. Still be waiting for you when you get back. Thank you for reminding me. Serves you right for having so many clothes. <laughs> well, it's about time. Are you ready to go? Mate, you're not going to believe this. If we are late for this exam, you are dead. I have more important things to worry about. What is more important than an English exam? Myrtle, she's on the loose. What? 
I tied her up next to the tap and she chewed through the cord. Now she's gone. No way. Yes, and you've got to help me find her. Oh, come on, mate. The owners are going to kill me. They wanted her back this morning. It is just a tortoise. They'll get over it. This is my business reputation we're talking about. And my BCE results. Sorry, mate, but the exams come first. things all the time. But last time you borrowed one of my tops, you went skating and got filthy. Oh, I did not. Girls, up there. He went up there. A uh, Harold? Yes. Follow him quickly. He's in a navy blue jumper. I found her. Oh, cool. Little nightmare was across the road, buried underneath the bush. You can run, but you can't hide. <laughs> That's a hundred bucks saved. And two hours of study time lost. I always said you had your priorities stuffed. Then again, I don't have to be a swat like you, do I? You feed my mice? Yeah, not like they needed it. One of them's got a massive gut. Yeah, I reckon she might be pregnant. What? That's right, pregnant. Listen to anything I had to say. Probably made matters worse. When Helen gets a B in her bonnet, I'm scared it's more than that, though. I'm scared that she might be losing a grip on things, you know, like not being able to tell what's real and what isn't. I heard about it happening. I mean, I never thought it would happen to Helen. That's not necessarily the case, mate. It's true. No, I'm convinced that, well, my theory's right about her seeing how it's done. Well, if that was true, it would clear up a lot of things. Are you doing anything tomorrow morning? No, more than usual. Why? A uh, bit of a favour. Would you mind coming down to the op shop when I take Helen down there? Sure. The fact that Helen knows we're all doubting her is beginning to upset her. I'd like to clear this up as soon as possible. The fact that you knew Harold. If I cop this guy at the op shop, then we might come up with some answers. Alone at last. Look, Stephen, I know this thing with Lee must have come as a bit of a shock. I was going to write, but... Eight bridesmaids. Balenciaga gown. Invitation sent to all points of the globe. Fifty grand down the gurgler. It didn't occur to you that an explanation might be in order. I changed my mind. I'm sorry. I had to take the coward's way out. When are you going to start telling the truth? It wasn't the marriage you were running out on. I know how you feel about me. Well, then, you don't know as much as you think because you're so far off the mark. Am I? Look, Stephen, you shouldn't have come. You're just wasting your time. I never waste my time. <sighs> sorry we took so long. I haven't missed anything, have we? The worst few hours of my life. And how are you doing over here? Oh, what do you think? Guys, thank you. Thank you so much. I think we may just have pulled it off. <laughs> True one. You'd have to be blind and stupid to be sucked in by that little performance. Which he's not. I reckon you'll be seeing more of him. And next time, Luke's not available. Diane, <sighs> Fergie, what else have you got? Nicole. Oh, Nicole, yes, I'd oh, like that. Me. If you're finished with it, royal reporting's a bit old hat for me these days. Mm. Hello? Madge, how are you? Oh, that's good. Where have you been? I see. But you obviously got my message. Mm. Well, I couldn't believe it myself at first. But it is Harold. No, no, I'm not mistaken. You are? It's all right. Any news on the situation at number 22? No, I'm afraid not. But once my citizens work things out, then you can't be the first to know. Yeah, I'm not pressuring you. We got into this as a business deal. I just don't want you to feel as though our friendship's in the way of you making the right business decision. No, I know, love, I know. But it is a large amount of money. Yeah, I understand. Oh. Hey, Red. Hey, it's not Long John Silver. <laughs> Oi, my hearty. Another lazy day ashore. Oh, yeah, I wish. Between tutoring Libby and dealing with Darren. That boy's not making your life easy, is he? Well, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Oh, sorry, mate. Chase Shares, Lou speaking. Lou, it's Helen here. I've just had a call from Madge. She's coming down, and I thought perhaps you might like to meet her at the airport. Madge is coming down here? Yes, tomorrow morning. Now, the flight details are... QF419 from Brisbane. Right, right. I'll ring the airport and make sure it's on time. Good. 
Well, I, I thought she could stay with us, but if you'd like to put her up... No, love, no, with you is fine. She'll like that. Good. She's very nervous about the whole thing. I bet she is. Well, thanks for letting me know. It's OK. Bye. Yeah, Cornish Rex is a personal favourite of mine. Yeah, all right, I'll see you then. More pets to mine? Yeah, cat. Cornish Rex, whatever that is. Told him I'd go pick it up after school, if that's all right with you. You've done very well with these pets. I'm impressed. Yeah. What if he doesn't recognise her? Oh, we'll think about that later. What you have to do is concentrate on getting Harold to lunch. Yes, well, I'm going to volunteer to work at the op shop, so that will give me all the morning to talk him into it. Well, old Jelly Belly won't suspect a thing. <laughs> I thought you were going to the airport. I am, and I'm cutting it fine. All this scheming and planning, I've got to pick up some cash. The car's almost out of petrol, that's all I need. Yes, it's rather frantic, actually. They no sooner come in and then off they go, as it were. Uh, <laughs> and uh, you really feel you make a difference? Uh, oh, just doing what I can, where I can. Uh. Well, of course, you must feel exactly the same way. Why else would you have volunteered to help today, eh? <laughs> oh, I'm not working you too hard, am I? Uh. <laughs> would you like a break? Oh, well, I, I was thinking of a, a luncheon break. Oh, lunch. Yes, yes, of course. All in good time. Lots to do yet. <laughs> Well, uh, I know a nice little place where we could have a bite to eat together. Well, that would be nice, but I'm afraid I brought my own sandwiches. Uh, maybe you could have those for your dinner tonight. <laughs> oh, I think the tomato may have made the, the bread nice and soggy by then. <laughs> Ted, I really don't like having my lunch alone. Oh, yes, yes, of course. All right, then. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> Tell you what, you go out and buy your sandwiches, and then we can sit in the sunshine and have our lunches together. That would be much nicer. <laughs> Hello, Madge. Lou! Oh! oh. <laughs> How are you? You look wonderful. Oh, yeah, thank you. You haven't changed a bit. <laughs> <laughs> you always were a bit of a flatterer. <laughs> Have you actually seen Harold? Yes. It is him. Mm-hmm. I mean, there can't be two people unlucky enough to look like that. <laughs> oh, stop it. <laughs> Sorry, old oh. Miss Diard. You know, it took me so long to accept the fact that I'd never see him again. Now I can't believe I'm actually going to. Yes, I know. When I saw him, it was like taking a a step back in time. A bit of a shock to the system, I can tell you. I mean, there I am, nicely settled up in Queensland. I'm even used to being called Gran these <laughs> days. Now I... I just got the feeling I don't know where I should be. Well, you're amongst old friends now. That's all you got to worry about. <laughs> Come on, let's get your bags and get you home to Ramsey Street. Yeah. Coffee? No, thanks. Um, Listen, about your shower screen, um, I think it's a job for the professionals, so I've called Carl and Mal Kennedy to come and have a look at it. Oh, soon? Yeah, very soon. Yeah, yeah. Great. How's your hand? Oh, that's fine. It's not a problem. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm a uh, bit out of practice when it comes to installing shower screens. Ah, uh, could have happened to anybody. <laughs> mm. I'm turning that um, second oh. room into a consulting room for oh. visiting patients. Right, right. Then it can double as a bedroom when Anne's here on access visits, if she stays. Oh, we're not getting on too well at the moment. Oh. What's the problem? Oh, who knows? Something's going on, but she's obviously not ready to tell me about it yet. <laughs> Teenagers, eh? Tell me about it. Oh, I only paid the connection fee this morning. It's my first call. Oh, where are they? Look, this, this Molly, she's reliable, is she? Yes, absolutely. She'll be here, Madge. Harold was never late for anything in his life. Here you go. Thanks, Joe. I thought your ship was over. It is now. Oh, I hope he hasn't smelled a rat. Helen! Oh, thank goodness she's still here. Where is he? Oh, is it the coffee shop? The coffee shop? Marlene Kretz. Madge Michelle. Hello, Marlene. <laughs> no, what's happened? I thought we'd made arrangements to meet. I'm 
well aware of that, that Ted will not enter licensed premises. Oh, of course I should have remembered. Yeah. Trying to drag him over here. I, I think he thinks I'm, I'm a, a hopeless drunk. Oh, I told him I was going outside to get a bit of fresh air. So, uh, I better pop back there now. Oh, no, um, Marlene, thanks for all your trouble. I think it might be best all round if I face Harold by myself. His name's Ted! Yeah. Are you sure he wouldn't like some support? No, no, thanks. I'd rather go by myself. <sighs> Wish me luck. Good, Good luck. luck. So I assumed that either I had been married at some time or I was still married. When you can't remember your own name, how are you supposed to start searching? Actually, you've had two wives. I beg your pardon? Well, um, I never met your first wife. She died before you moved to Erinsborough. Oh. So, so this... No, no, I, I gave you that. We're still married. Well, I assume we are. I never remarried, did you? I don't know. Not that I'm aware of. So, we... We both lived in Erinsborough together? Yeah, in Ramsey Street. Number 24? Yes, that's right. Apparently, Marlene Kratz lives there now. Oh, dear. Well, Marlene should have been back here ages ago. Oh, don't worry. She's in the pub with Helen. Oh, no. Oh, relax. She's not a booze artist. Neither is Helen. We were to have this reunion in the bar, but you threw a spanner in the works. Oh. This is also very confusing. You want to call it a day? No. No, no, no. I, I must know about my past. Well, I'm game if you are, Harold. Look, what do you want me to call you? <sighs> well, if... Uh, if I really am this Harold Bishop... I suppose I'd better get used to the name, eh? I'm glad. Somehow I can't see you as a dead. That was the name they gave me in rehab. <laughs> you see, my very first memory, and <laughs> this is a very vague one, is being revived on board a fishing trawler. Don't you remember how you got in the water? Oh, I'm afraid not. I've tried. I suppose you wondered why nobody looked for you. Yes, I did. <laughs> oh, for years I did. And then I just had to assume that I didn't have any family or friends. Oh, Harold, that's not true. We just thought you were dead. <laughs> and now you're here. I, I can't believe it. Just sneak down there and have a peek through the window? No, we could not. Oh. The best effort yet. You're making real progress. Thank you. You're looking perkier too. I'm positively dangerous. <laughs> it changed very much. I mean, am I anything like the Harold you remember? You haven't changed a bit. A little bit more grey, perhaps. A few more worry lines here. And you really should keep an eye on that tongue. 
Oh. But underneath, you're still the same person. Kind, gentle. Still beautiful. I, I, I just can't believe that we're married. No, oh, I'm sorry, that didn't come out the way I intended. Oh, dear. Ah, oh, she's a nice kid. Yeah. Nan, um, I was wondering if you'd sort of... if you've done anything uh, about the headstone. The headstone? Well, I've been thinking about it, naturally, but... I've been afraid to mention it in case I got my head bitten off. Yeah, well, I'd like to help you sort something out, if that's OK. Oh, yes, it'd be OK. It'd be a big relief. Are you ready to say goodbye to her? Good. Look, I was, uh... I was thinking that I'd have a, a sort of a family get-together, a sort of a memorial dinner. Would you be in that? Yeah, I'd like that. I'd like Lou to be there. Sure. I spent the whole day trying to keep cool. I remember what you said about your first meeting. I didn't want to scare Harold off. I'm sure you didn't. Well, he wants us to meet again. That's encouraging. I'm determined to bring him back then. Lead him away from Ted and back to Harold. I know it'll take a long time, but I am not going to give up. Until he remembers what we meant to each other. I want my husband back. For lunch, not oh. some sort of interrogation. Oh, I'll make you lunch. You just got to tell me where Toadie is. How would I know? I haven't seen him since muck-up day. Drop the act and told me all about your little meetings. Well, thank you very much, sis. Remind me to tell you even more intimate secrets Look, in the future. Look, I didn't mean it, OK? You didn't mean it. Lance. I just need to see him, okay? Why? He's fine. Well, he's my best friend. We've been best friends for years. I just want to talk to him. Sorry, I gave him my word. He'll understand. Oh, come on, Lance. Oh, what is this? A tag team? Oh, well, no, we're serious. Yes, and so am I. I told him I wouldn't tell, and I won't. Now get off my back. Madge, I'm home. So I see. These are for you. Though I don't suppose they make up for my behaviour, eh? No, not really. They are lovely, though. I hoped you'd like them. Harold, what's going on? I just don't know about you anymore. You, you, you come out this morning, drop a bombshell about not having a job, and the next thing I know, you've disappeared. Yes, I know, I know. I, I haven't handled things very well, have I? No, you haven't. And the worst thing is that you lied to me. I mean, why lie about having a job? It's just silly. Yes, I know it was, but... It's just that you seemed so proud of me when you thought I had a job. I, I thought it'd be better to let you believe what you wanted to. Oh, Harold. You've no idea what it was like looking for work. Day after day, people telling me that I'm old and useless. I ended up feeling like that. It was so different when everyone thought I had a job, I was respected. Love, I have always respected you. And I mean, it seems to me that this job that you've got with foster kids is a great deal more worthy than an assistant manager with some courier company, even if you don't get paid. There's actually quite a metaphor behind it. It's about human endeavour and overcoming life's little problems. Look, I have a feeling that Alana could be the real thing. So please, just work with me today, not against me. No worries. That's it! Grr, me! Grr! You hate me, you want to kill me! Great, great, now snarl at me, Bob, snarl! Grr! Grr, Bob! You hate me! Grr! You want to kill me, you Bob? Go, grr! Bite my jugular! I've only just started going through her belongings. That's when I found out about you. Baby West. That's you. No, yeah, well, it no. needs a bit of work. <gasps> what have you been scrapping it and starting again? Yeah. Oh. Come on, don't be a fatalist. Oh, I'm not fat. All it needs is some cuts and music and smoke and 
and things. Maybe I could get some of those computer-generated space creatures, you know, like Independence Day. Wouldn't it be cheaper just to change it a bit? Rock and roll, Joel, don't mess with my vision. No, 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 I mean, keep it sci-fi, but lo-fi sci-fi. <laughs> Mate, if using a lawn edger as a, as a death ray isn't lo-fi, I don't know what is. Shut up. I'm talking about, like, the Twilight Zone, where creepy things happen to normal people. It doesn't have to be in outer space. Raising up, Lance. Oh. Uh, I was just wondering, would you be able to help Felicity? me? Felicity? Flick, I can call you Flick, can't I? How you doing? Why don't you come in? Let me take your bag. This is a huge reduction for the two of you. Why? Well, we've discussed it, and um, Aussie Chef really isn't worth any more than we invested in it. And we don't want to give you a bum steer. Oh, well, then in that case, shall we say 4,500? That'll be fine. It's unusual to find such decency Which among way? business people, you know? Hello, man. You're both a rare breed. Well, we just hope yep. you make a better job of it than we did. Yes, she's right here. Match is Harold for you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Well, every success Hello? with Aussie Chef, Mr. Fan. I hope it makes you more happy than it brought me. It's already it's begun. Yes, yeah, wonderful. Okay, look. Wife. Oh, great. Thanks. Way to flatter me. No, well, Joel's going to be in it, aren't you? Hey, I just spent half a day in a silver jumpsuit and I'm paying for well, it. Well, there's no silver jumpsuits here or ray guns or anything. This is about suburbia gone mad. Up. Anything to be at your service. Am I doing it right? Uh, harder. <laughs> yeah, it's better. <laughs> and afterwards, I'll run a bath for you if you wish. Oh, I wish. And after that, I'll make your favourite dinner. Mm. Hey, woman. Yes, my dear. My feet hurt. Give me a rub. Oh, of course, anything you desire. Tony, Tony. You're good. Now kiss him. Well, he's your husband, right? Kiss him. And cut. Excellent, that was fantastic. You guys are great. That was lighting. Lighting was fine. Um, uh, how about we go for another one, just to make sure? No, no, I kind of like that one. Yeah, it was great. Uh-oh, care for a biscuit, eh? Now, listen. Just because you didn't know Rachel for a long time, that doesn't mean that you can't grieve. Let yourself mourn, Ted. Plenty of people to be here with you. Madge, myself. Well, Paul. He's been through it too. No, it's, it's just... It's just too much in one day. Yes, you're right. It is. And what am I supposed to do about this bone marrow stuff? I don't even know Tim, and now I have to I have to give a blood test? No, no, you don't have to do anything. You know, I've been cheated out of my mum twice. How's that for luck? That I've changed my mind. Yeah. Oh, I can't. I haven't changed my mind exactly. I don't know. I'm just so confused trying to work out what our relationship is. Well, what is it? I, I don't know. <laughs> hey. Right. You okay? Jump in. Let's go somewhere. No, no, it's okay. I'm just gonna go for a walk. Actually, let's go. <laughs> I'm sorry. I could probably take you more seriously if you weren't wearing that. Oh. <laughs> you see, Steph, you can't get with the times, can you? Oh, I love you. Oh, 
Hello. Oh, hi, Matt. Oh, really? Oh, um, yeah, yeah, sure. No, no, don't bother, Lou. I'll, I'll see you soon. OK, bye. They're short-staffed at the pub. Got to go and help out. Oh, OK. Oh, somebody will knock at the door next. Mm. <laughs> Hello, go, kitties. Mum. OK. Yeah. How's Harold? Will you please tell him that we're thinking of him? OK, we will we'll be there soon. Thank you for being here, all of you. It's, it does mean everything to us, you know. Everything's being arranged, Harold. You just have to give the word when you're ready. Oh, right. Uh, would anyone like to go in? Yes, mate. Yeah, I'd, uh, I'd like to say goodbye. Come and sit down. There's a cup of tea on the go. Oh, no, right. Paul, would you like anything? I'll get him something sweet. Yeah? Where's Dad? He, um, he's gone for a walk. He just wanted to be on his own for a little while. Me to go to Paris. <laughs> and I was talking about strolling along the Seine. And she just slipped away. I, I don't think there was any pain at the end, though. No. <laughs> So weird. One second she's breathing, and I was just sitting there watching her, and then she stopped. She didn't even move. She just, she just stopped breathing. How can, how can how can that be it? How can you just go from being alive to just just dying like that? I don't know. I don't understand it. All these people dying. Rachel, Madge, I don't get it. What's the point? I, why, do, why do we bother even loving people when things like this happen? What's wrong with me? I, I sat there looking at her. Paul's crying and I'm just, I was just looking at her. I was doing nothing. Paul has been really good to them. So have you. <laughs> this is stuffed. At least she knew you loved her. <laughs> she said she did. Well, you better believe it. I always reckon people know exactly how you feel. No. No. Sorry, I, I shouldn't have done that. That's, that's, that's wrong, I'm sorry. It's OK. No. No, I've, I've stuffed it even more. No, it's fine. <laughs> Can you just take me home, please? If you want. Oh dear, Dad will be home soon. I'd better get some dinner on. Uh, did he say where he's going? No, no, just for a walk. Uh, is there anything else we can do, Harold? What about Cassandra? Should we let her know oh. about the coffee shop? Oh, I forgot all about that. Yes, I'll have to give her a ring. I'll take care of that for you, mate. Oh, 
All right, yeah, I'll write her number down for you. Well, um... Yes, we'll be, uh, we'll be at home. Uh, if there's anything that you need, anything at all, just, just call us. Yes, I will. I will. Thank you so much. Oh. We'll see you tomorrow. Yes, Carl. Um, I have to organise a notice for the paper. Um... Well, look, you write down what you want and I'll make sure it gets in. Right. I'm going to go and find Tad. Yes, right. Oh, I am so glad you're here. Oh, that's terrific. Here, I'll open Thank that. you. You seen Harold? Yeah. We didn't stay long. Looks terrible, Dad. Yeah. Lou over there? Yeah. yeah, he wasn't staying there. He was going down the pub or something. But is he crazy? He can't work at the moment. Oh, sometimes work's comforting. Harold, mm. uh, he seemed gutted. They both did. Mm. You know, he was trying to talk, but uh, it was just, oh, you know. Madge. Godspeed. Do you want a cup of tea or something like that? No, I'll, I'll you know, no, 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 she wanted you to have that. And Tad, she asked me to give you this ring. There we are. Oh dear, a bit big, eh? She said you reminded her of Uncle George. <laughs> so what, I'm a rough nut now, am I? Oh, might have been that. But I think you're just giving her a bit of cheek. All right, now listen, I've got something to say to you too, and I want you to listen to me very carefully. It's about all this fighting that's been going yeah, on well, between. Now, no, please, Paul, that. please, just just listen to me, please. I don't want either of you hurting each other or yourselves over who loved who the most or who was hurting who. You see, Madge loved you. She said that, and, and she meant it. She, she didn't expect everything to be plain sailing. She knew what she was getting into. But, well, we both knew that. And even when things were at their very worst, she never changed her mind. She loved you. Now, I, I'm not just saying this to make the moment a little easier for you, but it's, it's just a fact. I don't think anyone knows how they should be at a time like this. It's just... It's too confusing. Hmm? But whether you... Whether you cry or whether you... Punch a wall or just sit quietly in your room, it makes no difference. All that matters to me is that... You loved her.